things could get a bit awkward at the White House today. Why? Because former President Barack Obama and his wife Michelle will be there for the unveiling of their official portraits. But their visit comes on the heels of that bombshell book that shattered the Obama-Biden bromance myth. Turns out, according to the book, that the former president found his vice president condescending. He thought that he rambled on hmm, and even wanted to replace him on the 2012 ticket with Hillary Clinton. Plus, who could forget how the former president's last visit to the Biden White House turned out? Back in April, Mr. Obama was mobbed and seemed to steal the spotlight and current President Biden was left Aww. looking lost and bereft, <laughs> roaming through the East Room there. Uh, also a bit awkward because President Obama began this way. Thank you. Vice President Biden, Vice President. <laughs> That was a joke. That was all set up. Okay, so <laughs> Emily, this morning the Washington Post comes out with this reporting on this moment, and here's what they said. But for some longtime Biden staffers, the zinger punctured the celebratory mood. They saw the quip, <laughs> intentional or not, as part of a pattern of arrogance from Obama and a reminder of the disrespect many felt from Obama's cadre of aides toward Biden. Oh, yes. I mean, this is a page out of Mean Girls, right? He could have said that joke, which would have been funny, later in the speech. He could have said it at the end. He could have come out with respect, with respect for the office and his former vice president by acknowledging that that man is now the president. But he was like, oh, no, honey. It's still me. And what I love, too, is the media coverage of it. So did you guys see CNN said that this was they're talking about today and they're saying, like, it's in the same room. Obama awarded Biden a surprise presidential medal of freedom in 2017. A, quote, teary ceremony that reflected the two men's deep mutual respect. They go on to say, however, <laughs> while both like to play up their relationship in public, there are limits to their relationship. And I think that's media soft speak for them acknowledging that, yes, there is tension because he will never get out of the other one's spotlight just like our intro song, which kudos to the production team for putting that one. <laughs> Harris, I want to get your thoughts to that moment, but we'll play some VO um, as you speak, um, some video, and this is oh, this is Biden looking very bereft. Kamala got mobbed, Obama got oh. mobbed, and yeah. poor Biden. Well, Kamala stood next to Obama. Yes. So, you know, she was soaking up that gold and that spotlight <laughs> that was like, <laughs> overflowing. Um, and, and nobody can explain why the, the current president was talking to the flagpole in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> all of it true, all of it on camera. Um, part of this, though, it's more than just the palace intrigue in the White House. Th this talks to the lack of descendancy that there is in the Democrat Party. And I'm, I'm always curious on your thoughts on this, Jessica. There, there's nobody who is next that he can pass that mantle to. And clearly mm. there have been moments, we're not doctors, but clearly there have been moments that have left even lay people like ourselves questioning, and I've said it, is he okay? I mean, I was legitimately concerned outside that East Jerusalem church when he could not stop coughing, when he talked about a previous headache. When, I mean, there, there were concerns. And then two weeks later, he tested positive for, for COVID, which is something that anybody could do. Right. But it lingered for quite some time. He has a, a 80 some year old man's immune system, even though he's not quite 80 yet. Um, so all of that, but at the same time, where, who, who's going to take over? Like, is it really Hillary Clinton? I mean, <laughs> she's saying no. I think Doc protests too much, according to Sean Duffy. Uh, you think she might be back in it. This really speaks to the lack of people down the chain. Yeah, mm. you're, you know, Jessica, you know this. You are a Democrat, so I, I presume you know some people in these Definitely circles. Am. Yeah. And I'm curious your response. The Washington Post dug in a little bit deeper, saying that beneath this jovial atmosphere, there's long simmering tension, even some jealousy between the circles around Obama and Biden, the two Democrat presidents of the past 15 years and the ones who bracketed uh, what Democrats see as the disastrous Trump tenure. Um, and they say that, you know, some of the aides that were brought in were Obama aides, like Jen Psaki, others who were Obama personnel, and it left some of the longtime Biden personnel feeling like, hey, guys, we're still here. We were here on day one. Well, it was the Obama-Biden administration. So yes, obviously you come in with your relative teams, but you're serving the government, and the government mm -hmm. is made up of both of those people that are leading it. Uh, the palace intrigue stuff, it's always fun. Right, and we also know that these are jobs. Everyone acts like this is supposed to be some you know, buddy comedy. It's not. You know, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were not hanging out before they became president and vice president, right? Mike Pence was picked for a very specific reason, and Joe Biden was picked for a very specific reason. There's been a lot of reporting about how David Axelrod and David Pluff 
pick Joe Biden. And it wasn't actually who Barack Obama wanted as mm -hmm. his first choice. But they said, this is the person that is going to deliver us the win against John McCain. And lo and behold, it did. Now, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton are very special people. Their magnetism, their charisma, the way that they connect with people is almost unrivaled. And there is going to be jealousy when it's, it's the same thing as you're at a party, right? Yeah. Someone's in the middle of the room and everyone wants to talk to that person because they make you feel like the most important person in the room. They're so magnetic, so charismatic. But that doesn't mean that there's actually a problem here. I'm not going to reduce it to the friendship bracelets, you know, which they yeah, wear. But who else but has that magnetism? And that's the not point the that I'm making. Not the basement president. No. Right? Well, and by the way, in judge. this room, that would be Charlie. I agree. <laughs> Charlie for president. Not, yeah. not in my party. The basement but. president doesn't cut it. But I mean, I think it's an understatement to say it wasn't uh, Obama's first choice. In fact, Obama said, shoot me now when Biden was talking, yeah. according to this book. Uh, he said he was old school, condescending at best, borderline offensive at worst. The guy can just talk and talk. It's an incredible thing. I, Obama's I, reported as saying. Yeah, no, and, and I'm sure all of that is true. It's like w w some of the, the very rare, totally accurate reporting that comes out of the White House. Um, but I, I'm, I get so tired of listening to Barack Obama complain about Joe Biden because it's like you have nobody to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden had been laughed off the, the political stage. He'd run for president multiple times, <laughs> caught lying each time. Everybody found him insufferable. He was gone. He was being taken out with the garbage. And then Barack Obama picked him up and, and needed him to get into the White House or, or perceived that he needed him to get into the White House, picked him up brought him into the White House and resuscitated him. Yeah. They, so he has nobody to blame but himself. That's exactly right. Biden rode on the Obama coattails yes. all the way to the presidency through the basement. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.